This video provides an overview of the anatomy for the supraclavicular and interscaling blocks. The pertinent structures include the clavicular and sternal heads of the sternocleidomastoid muscle, the clavicle, the subclavian artery and vein, the external jugular vein, the anterior and middle scalene muscles, and the superior, middle, and inferior trunks of the brachial plexus. The subclavian artery emerges between the anterior and middle scalene muscles, traversing over the first rib and under the clavicle. By isolating the nerves, we can see the cervical nerve roots emerging from the cervical foramen to form the upper, middle, and lower nerve trunks above the first rib. The interscaling block is performed at the cervical nerve roots, with local anesthetic typically deposited between the C5 and 6 nerve roots. The supraclavicular block is performed at the base of the neck above the first rib and adjacent to the subclavian artery to block the superior, middle, and inferior trunks. The infraclavicular block is performed below the clavicle at the outer one-third of the clavicle to block the lateral, posterior, and medial cords of the brachial plexus. The axillary block is performed in the axillary fold where the musculocutaneous, median, radial, and ulnar nerves can be individually identified and blocked. This surface anatomy image shows the two heads of the sternocleidomastoid muscle, the level of the C6 vertebrae and chassinex tubercle, the clavicle, the external jugular vein, and the needle insertion point for the interscaling block. The needle is inserted in the interscaling groove towards the C5 and 6 roots. When using dynamic ultrasound with an in-plane needle insertion technique, the insertion point is more posterior and traverses the middle scaling muscle towards the cervical plexus. The tip of the needle is positioned next to the C5 and 6 roots. Nerve stimulation using a 0.5 milliamp stimulus may be used to confirm that the needle is not within a nerve bundle. A negative aspiration test is performed to ensure the needle tip is not in a vascular structure. A test injection of a couple of mils of 5% dextrose may be used to confirm proper needle placement and confirm that resistance to injection is minimal prior to the administration of local anesthetic. 20 to 25 mils of local anesthetic results in a preferential block of C5 to 7, which innervate the deltoid, supraspinatus, infraspinatus, and teres major muscles. The interscaling block is suitable for operations on the shoulder, clavicle, and upper arm. There is variable spread to C3 and 4 and the cervical sympathetic chain, which can result in Horner syndrome and hoarseness post-block. This is not really a complication, but rather a side effect which a patient should be made aware of before the procedure is performed. The interscaling block always results in hemidiaphragm paresis because of the close proximity of the phrenic nerve, which arises from C3 to 5. Any patient who cannot tolerate a reduction in pulmonary function greater than 30% should not receive this block. The block typically spares the ulnar nerve C8 to T1. The interscaling block is not appropriate for surgery on the forearm and hand.